So in this unit, so I created a project, a new project called a unit called Westphalia. And inside that failure, inside that folder, I put a Maya project directory. So here it is. It's called Westphalia. That is, this is a Maya project. So let me just show you what the Maya project is. So you have a, an idea of what it is you're seeing in Unity. Let's go set project. Everybody knows, hopefully by now, that in Maya, you always set project before you do anything. So here's my, it's on a, an external drive I have called T3 in a folder called Unity. And the name of the Unity project is Westphalia. And so I go, I look in my assets folder, and then this is the, that's a typical Unity project directory, right? Everybody knows that when you create Unity, you create a project directory. You don't just store scene files on your willy nilly on your hard drive. So that's the Unity, that's the Maya folder, project folder, okay? But before I start, I need to set the directory. So I'm gonna select that folder and say set. And now whenever I say open scene, it automatically looks in the scene directory inside that Westphalia project directory. So I'm gonna select that, say open. I don't need to save the default file. All so right. you're doing this, this image thing in Maya? Uh, I thought it was done in Unity. Yeah, this mo what I'm trying to show you is, is that to get this started, I made a very simple piece of geometry in Maya, and mm -hmm. then I brought that in. I did my initial texture work in Maya, and then I brought that into Unity, and then I'll show you how to, how to mess with it in Unity. You could also do this all straight in Unity. There's no reason that you have to do it in Maya. It's just this project was laying around and I already had at it. So this is kind of hybrid in between what you may or may not want to do. Again, it's just a demo. Does that make sense? So in other words, there's a, a sphere right here. See that sphere? You can create a sphere in Maya too. I mean in Unity as well. You don't have to do it here. But it's easier for me to just do it in Unity. I mean in Maya and then bring it in. So I have a sphere and on this sphere I have attached uh, a Lambert shader, which is the default shader that comes that you would probably anything would get would would have applied to it in in Maya, and then I have mapped to that this image called Westy Five Alpha, and if we choose to view this, no, oh, I gotta choose a different one. You'll see that what this image is. source images, West D5 Alpha D, this image right here. This image is textured to the inside of this sphere, okay? And it's a spherical image. I'm gonna open up Photoshop and you can see what it looks like. Okay, so that's a spherical image. And you can create spherical images. You can download them from the web. Uh, you can, has everyone created a spherical image at some point? Maybe? Maybe not? I haven't. You haven't? Okay. I mean, they're, they're like little cheapy apps you can put on your phone. You know how, you, you know how on your phone, you can, uh, if you have an iPhone, you can do a panorama? Has everybody done that at least? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So you could, uh, essentially a spherical image is a panorama that wraps 360 degrees. So if you wanted to like have a sphere, in this case, I wanted a sphere in geometry with a, uh, a spherical image mapped to the inside of it. And so that's what I did. Um, I shot this image inside this vehicle that I have. It's an old VW bus and I cleaned it up and made a big a ping out of it. And uh, if you're familiar with the ping format where it's gray right here is all transparent, right? Does everybody, you've, you've taken digital imaging, you know how to create a trans... The, the PNG? Yeah. <laughs> ping, that's fun. I should start saying it like that. Oh, you, you've never heard of it called a ping before? No, it's it, fun. What do you say? Do you say GIF or GIF? I refuse to answer that's the incendiary question. It may incriminate you, right? <laughs> it's incriminating. 
<laughs> yeah. So a PNG file is a uh, a pretty you know common image format, and that the advantage of it is is that unlike a JPEG, it can hold transparency information, right? Does everybody know that? I, I need to make sure you know that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I can't see right now. How do I see you guys? God, this is pissing me off. I want to see you. So I can even leave. No, I don't know why it's not letting me. Um, anyway, so yeah, it's a it's a PNG image, and everywhere it's gray here is. It, I just took it into Photoshop, my spherical image. I took it into Photoshop, and I cut out the areas that I wanted to be transparent, which happened to be where the glass is. Okay, and so then when you bring that into Maya and map it to the inside of this sphere. Uh, you have to turn your normals around on your sphere so that they're facing inside, right? Does everybody come across? I, I know that we talked about this in class, but the idea of the direction of your normals is important. So if I go display uh, polygons and I do face normals, see those little green, those little green guys, see how they're all pointing to the inside of the sphere? but they're not pointing to the outside of the sphere. So geometry in Maya is always, or in, uh, in Unity, in any game engine for that matter, is single-sided. It only, uh, you can, if I were to bring this into the Unity and not have the normal space in the right way, it would just be transparent. I wouldn't be able to see it at all. Does that make sense? God, I wish I could see you. Yes. That happened to me in my first project. Yeah, I, I remember we talked about that in class, and I just wanted to make sure that everybody uh, show video panel. There it is. I can see you now. It got hidden. All right, so now I can see you. Wonderful. All right, so that's essentially what we have here. We have a sphere with a text with a spherical image mapped to the inside of it. And that's really all you need for this, for what I did here in Unity, okay? I mean, in Maya, nothing special. So I'm gonna close that down. Any questions about this before I get out of Maya? Um, I don't really have any, I, I was wondering like, in, in a spherical thing when you create this kind of image, would you then have to, like, would the lighting already kind of be embedded into it because it's a picture? Like, you don't have to worry about any kind of lighting interface. Right. That's the beauty of working with photographs is it, it can, it's a, you know, it's a double-edged sword. Sometimes you do want to de-light, what's called de-light photographic images if you're using them for textures. And Unity has a, a tool that you can use called the de-lighting tool that will take photographic images and, rem and simulate the removal of natural lighting. It kind of converts it into a diffuse map. Uh, and then that way your lighting affects your images. But in this case, because of what I'm doing artistically, I kind of like the natural lighting and I wasn't really worried about that. So I didn't bother delighting it or anything. All the shadows are are baked into the image itself, and I'm I'm happy with the way it looks. But good good question though. That is something to consider, depending on what you're doing. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any other questions? All right. So, I'm gonna, so that that project, I just dropped the entire project directory into my Maya scene. I mean, my Unity scene. Now I can just quit saying Maya. Uh, and so that's what this is right here. If you see this folder, that's my project directory for uh, Maya that's sitting inside my assets directory. So if I wanted to go in and make changes in that model file, uh, I could do that very simply by opening Maya up, making changes and saving them. And then when I come back to Unity, it'll automatically re-import and the changes would be reflected in Unity. That's the advantage of working this way. Okay. All right. So once I did that, all I do is I I drag this uh, this this thing, this model. Select the 
a little filter here for models and I drag this into my scene and this is what I end up with is this prefab, which is this guy right here. So that's exactly what you just saw in, in Maya. Okay. That's just a photograph attached to a piece of geometry. Um, I have a main camera, nothing special. And I have, a, I did put a directional light. I think I put the directional light in there because I was playing around with this little cube right here. All right, so let's say we want to do something with this thing. I'm gonna, I have another scene here. Uh, and I'm gonna open that one up. And so this scene is a little more developed. Um, is that better? So in this scene, what I've done is create a timeline and I've created a series of images and I've created a cinema machine camera over here, a virtual camera. And I've created a particle system. See all these little flies flying out at us. And, uh, and what happens with this is I can, I need to move you now. So if I take this thing and hit the play button, you'll see I've, cr I've animated my camera to just basically follow a, an invisible cube that's in the scene. And then I'm spawning these flies that are flying at us. Pretty simple. Again, it's just a demo. This isn't, you know, it's just a play with, with how to do various things. Somebody asked on uh, Tuesday, how do I uh, take a particle system and change it out and put my own images on there? All I did was download a fly image and, and open it up in Photoshop and remove the background and then changed out the particle emitter so that it would emit the, the images that I want, want to emit, okay? Are you able to create the same effect with different shapes, like if it wasn't a sphere? Or does it have oh, to? Oh, yes, yes. Oh, I could do a cube, I could do a plane. Uh, you could do, like I could do a stack of planes here in front of this uh, that you would that move towards, you know, or would move towards you. Uh, let me go, I'm gonna back up and I'm gonna do the whole thing, recreate this scene right here that you're looking at from scratch, okay? Does that help? And, and and the thing is, is you can change out any of this kind of stuff to do what it is you need to do. So let me go back here and I'll, I'll restart it from scratch. Actually, what I'm going to do is this. So this is the rough geometry. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make, uh, I'm going to duplicate that scene. I'm going to say save as, and I'm going to call it in my scene folder. Uh, Westy demo. And, all right, so now we have ourselves a new scene. It's been, been built on the same one. And so the first thing I need to think about, I've got my geometry brought in. And like you said, uh, Imani, we can do any geometry we want in here. Planes. Uh, whatever you want. You can create it in here if you want to, in Unity, I mean, in Unity if you want to. You don't have to work with, with uh, uh, Maya at all. All I've done here is in my Unity project, I have imported, uh, I haven't done anything in this particular one. So what I, I'm going to show you how to do is, first thing I want to do is go, and I need to find Cinema Machine. And actually that's already, it's been imported already. So in this scene then, the first thing I need to do, yeah, the reason you can tell I have Cinema Machine installed is because it, it shows up in the menu up here, right? So the very first thing that I need to do is after I install Cinema Machine, is create an object, a game object, an empty game object. So I'm gonna make a new game object empty and I'm gonna give it a name. I'm gonna rename it. I'm gonna call it Timeline. Okay, so just a 
just an empty object called timeline. And I'm going to go to assets and create and timeline and actually make what's called a, a timeline. You can see down here it wants a name for it. I'll just call it Westy TL. How about that? Okay. And come over here to add, add uh, yours won't have this on it. Select add component and pull down to cinema machine and go cinema machine brain. So what you're doing is, is you're telling your camera, I want your, I want my main camera to be associated with the cinema machine brain. And that's, that's the main linkage you have between just a normal unity camera and the cinema machine uh, system. Okay. Um, I need to select my timeline down here. Oh, here it is. Timeline create. See, now it's showing up. I don't know why it's being so weird. Maybe it's because, there we go. This is what I was expecting you to see down here where the create dialog is. I think it's because I've, there's some delay going on. It's not like updating in real time for some reason. I might have too much stuff on. Uh, I'm going to go Westy, give it a name. Uh, Westy um, TL timeline. Okay. All right. Now we're now we're cooking. So now I have this little guy right here, and I have a timeline that's associated with this game object called timeline up here in the top. The reason for creating this empty game object in the hierarchy is so that when you select it, your, all your stuff shows up under your timeline for you. It just makes it more convenient. Um, so the next thing that I'll do after that is I'll um, drag my main camera into my timeline and say, add cinema treat machine track. Okay. So now I have a cinema machine track. Now I want to select these little uh, uh, little ellipses right here, or if you want to, you can just right click and go add cinema machine shot. So now we have ourselves a cinema machine shot. Now, as soon as you do that, you're going to have over here in your inspector. See my mouse? I'm sorry, my mouse isn't highlighting. I turned, maybe I need to, I might need to unshare and reshare for it to work. Uh, right over here where it says virtual camera, select create. And voila, you have yourself this thing right here, which is a uh, virtual camera related to your, your geometry. Now, right now it's just sitting there. This is the game view. Uh, you can hit your W key uh, and you can position this guy. In my case, I'm going to position it at zero, 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 zero. And I'm going to rotate it so that it's facing down one axis here, zero and negative 90. I think is what I want. Actually, I don't want negative 90, I want zero. All right, I'm gonna turn this little piece of geometry off here that I don't need, this sphere. I'm just gonna turn that guy off, okay? All right. Any questions about how we got to this point? 
Just to clarify, so you're making a shot. You're like animate, and like in the timeline, you're animating basically like the cinema machine camera, like you're telling it to like focus on that. You do it, okay? Yep. Cool. I know for for this particular uh, scene, um, what I want to do is is my goal with this is to create a shot where our camera is situated where a person might be sitting in the back of this bus and looking out the windows. And I want to animate my camera as if it's sitting there, you know, looking around. Uh, to, if I were to do this for real, I would do all sorts of funky stuff to make it more realistic. But just to show you how you can position a camera and then animate where the camera looks and control its animation with respect to the geometry in your scene, right? If you had planes here and you wanted to walk by your planes, you could do the same thing, animate your camera using CinemaChine and move it around through the site. I'm gonna show you how to set keyframes and how to do all that kind of stuff uh, on your camera. Now, what's the next thing we need to do? So we have ourselves, we have geometry, we have a camera, we've associated it with the CinemaChine brain over here. Uh, we have created a timeline and we've added our main camera to the timeline and we've created a shot on that timeline, which represents this, uh, the period of this camera. I'm gonna pull this out to like say 600, 600 frames. That's about 10 seconds, right? Cause it's 60 frames per second. Um, and then we have taken, we've got our camera, our virtual, we've created our first virtual camera, which is over here. So our next question is, is okay, now how do I, how can I animate my camera? How can I get my camera to do something interesting? So in this case, um, what I want is my camera to look around, right? If you, if you were doing a, a cinematic shot in a normal kind of a game, you might have a character that's walking around and you would have your camera follow the character, right? You've seen stuff like that. Uh, but in this case, we don't, aren't gonna follow a character, but we do wanna have something we can animate that we're following. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to create a 3D object and I'm just gonna make a cube. And that cube is right here. And I'm going to put it at zero, zero. All right, so now it's at the center. I'm going to hit my W and I'm going to move that right out here, out of, out of my, my cube or out of my sphere. And I'm going to scale it down just, just because I want to scale it down. Come on, let me scale you. There you go. So I just hit my R key, and now I'm going to scale this down, something like that. Okay. So what this is going to be is just my object that I animate, and I'm going to have my camera look at that object, and no matter where I animate this cube is where my camera is going to to follow. Okay. And uh, I'm going to give this a name. I'm just going to call this my watch. Watch me. And I don't really care if this thing is seen. When it, once I get going, uh, you know, when I get to the a point where I want to not see this anymore, I'll just turn the mesh renderer off, and you'll see that it it still works, but it, it just doesn't get rendered in the scene. I'll leave it on for right now, just so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so now I have something to follow. Let me select my timeline and I'm gonna take this cube and I'm gonna drop it down here into my, uh, into my timeline and I'm gonna just make it an animation track, right? So now I have an animation track 
and I'm going to select. All I got to do is hit my record button. Okay. All right. So right now I'm recording the position of my watch me piece right here. All right. And so if I take this and just barely jiggle it, you see that I have a keyframe right here, right? You see my keyframe? And I can now move this thing, let's say, over there a little bit and move it someplace over here. Boom, it sets another keyframe. Move another certain number of frames. Move it over here. I have another keyframe. Move this thing here. Come back to the middle. I have another keyframe. Move it some other place. Really doesn't matter. Again, this is just demo. Move it up. I have another keyframe. Another certain distance. Move it down. I have another keyframe. Move it. Let's just move it some weird place over here. All right. And let's say I come back to the very end and I want it to be uh, back where it was on that first keyframe. So that might be a little more tricky. I might have to might have to edit that keyframe somewhere in there. All right. And I'll turn this off. All right. So now I have I've animated that cube in my scene. So you can see it's all keyframed up. Now my camera is not watching it, right? But I can make that happen. And the way I make that happen is I come to my virtual camera over here. And you can see that in my virtual camera, I have this little, uh, there we go. Can you see that? Did that show up? I think it did. What was that? What's that? What was that that just happened? Did you see that highlight around there? Oh, right. yeah. Okay, great. Cool. Okay. I just want to make sure this thing is working the way I think it is. Uh, so I have two properties here. I have a follow property on my virtual camera. Notice I have that selected over here on this side. Uh, so there's a follow property and then there's a look at property. And so what I want is for this camera, my virtual camera, to look at something in my scene. And what I want it to look at is my watch me object that I created, that cube. So I'm going to grab it and drag it over here and drop it in that slot. So now uh, this camera is associated with looking at that watch me object. Now, if I come back to my timeline here and I try and play this, you're going to be very disappointed because nothing happens. You're like, oh, I broke it. It doesn't work. It still works. You just have to configure some more stuff. So the next thing you got to do is come down here to the bottom where it says aim. And right now it's set to do nothing. So the camera does not automatically look at this thing until you tell it to do that. So what you want to do is you can do one of two things, or actually several things, but I'll show you the two that are important for this purpose. If you do hard look at, then this thing will follow that timeline no matter what. And it keeps that cube in view. Okay. All right. So we've animated it. Uh, there's another option you can do. And instead of hard look, there may be times when you want a hard look. There may be times when you want to do what's called use the composer. 
And the composer allows you to do soft framing of, you, you can actually change the damping of your camera. So if we go over here and we, I'm gonna lock this so that this stays up and I'm gonna hit my play. And now I can select my camera and you can change the damping. Uh, oh, I, I actually, first of all, I need to make sure this thing loops, all right? It's not looping right now. So I go to my timeline and does everybody notice what I mean? It's playing 600 frames and then stopping. I want this thing to continuously loop. So what I need to do is select this timeline, which is this timeline object I have here. And under wrap mode, I need to tell it to loop. So now when I hit my play button, it will play through the animation and it should loop. Let's see what happens. There may be a little glitch at the end if I didn't line up that keyframe just right. No, looks good. So now with my timeline locked, so that it doesn't go away. When I select my virtual camera over here, you can change your, your damping. So if I go horizontal damping, see the yellow dot? See how it's trying to stay up with that, that, uh, that cube? If I turn the damping up, it's staying much tighter. Actually, I, what I wanna do, if I loosen it, Oh, I know, I got to turn my dead zone width up. Go down, down, down. See how you can try, you, it, in other words, you make more natural camera movements because it doesn't, stay locked exactly on where your animation is. The camera kind of follows it. Actually, that's looking ahead. Um, I think what I want is, yeah, that's actually anticipating. Anyway, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on that, but you can, you can adjust uh, the, the following of the camera if you do it with uh, the composer. And there are tutorials on this online. In fact, let me show you one of the tutorials. Uh, this is a good tutorial, right? Uh, there's a whole playlist. If you just go to Cinemachine tutorial on YouTube, you'll see this one is a really good one that kind of goes over a lot of stuff, like how you can interactively use the composer to uh, compose the scene. And then this playlist right here at the Unity uh, YouTube channel has a whole bunch of uh, you know, set of, of uh, playlists to do particular things that you might want to do, like set up a dolly shot and that sort of stuff. Okay. All right, let's stop this. Boom. All right, what else do we need to know how to do? Um, let us create our particle system that I had in that other scene. Um, I could very easily <clears throat> take objects now. You, you can probably imagine how I could take objects and animate them in this scene to, to move past the sphere I'm in. And in my game view, it would look as if I was actually driving the vehicle, right? It would look as if it was moving because objects would be going by my point of view inside the vehicle. So that would be one thing to do. Uh, but another thing to do is to just do a, set, a series of particles. So let's do that. Let's do a particle emission. Let's say I want to have a bunch of bugs splatting or you know flying at me as I go down the road to communicate a sense of uh, speed object. Effects. Okay, I want to go game object, effects, particle system. And that'll create a standard Unity particle system. And I'm going to put this thing 
at zero, zero. And I'm going to move it off in the distance so it's in front of my camera. And so the next thing that I want to figure out how to do here is how to change these. These are these sprites that are associated with the particle system. I want to put my own something on there, right? So the way to do that is to change, if you look over here, you'll see that there is a default particle system material that's attached, right? And what we want to do is, uh, what I did, and I've already done that, I won't take your time showing you how to do this because you should know how to work with Photoshop by now. Uh, I created an images folder and I, uh, I'll show you in Photoshop. I just took a, an image of a fly and I created a, a black background. You don't really even have to do the black background. Uh, but essentially, I created this image, which is a, I'll save as a ping or a PNG uh, with the background removed so that it's got translucence to it. I'll export it. Uh, actually, what I did first is I'll, I'll change the size to something relatively small. Right now, it's 600 pixels by 600 pixels, and we don't need it to be that big because it's just going to be a little sprite. So uh, I change, and you want to change these so that they're square. Make your textures square or what's called a powers of two size. They can't just be any size. And so a powers of two texture size is, uh, let's say, start at 128 by 128, or 256 by 256, or 256 by 512, or 512 by 512, or 1024 by 1024, 248, 2048 by 2048, right? Does that make sense to everybody? A yes. power, okay, powers of two texture. So this one here, I just made 256 by 256 and, uh, and then saved it out as a, as a ping with transparency. And that then became this image right here, right? Transparency with a little fly on it. And once that's saved into, I created this images folder and put my images inside there. Okay, so I'm going to create a material from scratch. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go create material. Okay, click that little plus there and pull down to material. And I'm going to call it uh, this, this fly. Okay. And so now I have a material up here. Are you still with me? <laughs> I have a new material up here. And uh, I need to decide what kind it's going to be. There's a, a bunch of different types of materials. You'd think you'd use sprites, but really what you need is particles and standard unlit particles. So what that means is, is that these particles are going to show up and they're not going to be, since they're just flat 2D images, you don't need them to be lit per se, like like you would a 3D object. So uh, I've changed this to a particle uh, material. And I'm going to come right here where it says maps, select that and choose my fly. Okay, so now I have a fly. And now I'm gonna come back over to my particle system. I'm going to take my this fly material and I'm going to drag it right here and replace this material in my renderer. So now when I play, I'll end up with these fly images where the uh, other particles were. I'm going to turn off this uh, cube that we're following, my watch me cube, just the renderer. 
so you you can see past it. There you go. It's still there. Uh, come back into my particle system. So now what I've got to do is I've got to decide how I'm going to handle my material. And if I come down to this shader where I was messing with the default one before unsuccessfully, I need to tell it how to render the material. So the first thing I'll do is I think I want it to be additive. And I probably want it to be uh, I'm not exactly sure which way I want it to be. If I want it to be an overlay color, I think I just want it to be multiply. And maybe what I want it to do is be cut out. There we go. Okay. All right. So now I have flies. What's the next thing we want to do? Probably want to have these flies flying towards the vehicle, right? Yes. So I'm going to hit my, you saw that I hit my E key to go into the, to get my gizmo. And I'm just going to turn this thing down, make them fly towards my, my vehicle. And I can come over to my particle system. And let's say I want them to go. Uh, let's go. I can change my start size, make them be a little smaller, 0.5. So now they start out small. So they look like they're a little further away. I can, uh, I can randomize the rotation of them so they're not all in the same direction. So I'll just go random between two constants and I'll start out at zero and let's say 90 degrees. So now they are all, all coming out at you know different random orientations. Um, what else? I can do it that way too if I want to with it in 3D. And turn up the speed, the length, duration, the numbers, somewhere I can set the number of them. Uh, I think that's under emission. So right now there's 10. I can go, if I go 100, a lot more of them, right? See how some of them are passing through? If I wanted to, I could put a, a cube around my sphere here and make it a collider, or I could actually make my uh, my sphere a collider, and then they would bounce. They wouldn't pass through into my view. Easy enough. And uh, so what else would you want to do? Let's say we put a, I mean, I think, I guess I should just say any questions. <laughs> Is there anything that you want to know how to, I mean, that's essentially the things that we talked about on Tuesday that people had questions about, I think. Any other things that you want to know how to do? You had said something about video immunity before. Oh, video, video. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, let's see. We can do, let's do that. Let's go. Um, I'm going to create a 3D plane. And I think it's probably easiest to just do a 3D plane. Let's see. There might be. This might be new. I've never seen this before. Video clip. Let's put a video clip. What kind of video clip do we want in there? Um, see if I got a video clip that's easily accessible.
think if I go, all right, so it's imported my video. If you drop it into your uh, assets folder, it automatically will appear, right? So now we got ourselves a video and uh, where is it though? W, it's right there. This is a new way of doing it. I've never done it this way with this video player thing. Uh, render to texture, target texture. I don't think it's going to show anything. Um, that's interesting. Let's see what that does. That's cool. So that so what I just did was you can render it to your camera uh, plane. So so what that did was let me back up here. So I like this. This is a new uh, a new technique. So on um, it used to be it always had to be associated with a piece of geometry or something, which you probably will want more often than not. But let's just say let's say you had a cloud. You want a bunch of clouds in the background. It, right now I have that video. It doesn't, you know, but this, see this little white line right here, this, this line right there, that is the far clip plane. So every camera, every uh, view device in a game has a, a near clip plane and a far clip plane. And the reason for a, a clip plane is so that the, the renderer, the, the computer doesn't try and render things that aren't going to be seen. It's a, it's an efficiency method to make the make the uh, game more uh, you know real time and more responsive and not use so many resources. You don't need to use resources to draw things that you can't see anyway. So what this what this video player does is it if you load a clip into it, you can actually choose to render into the far uh, camera flip of uh, uh, far clip plane. Uh, through this render mode and then you just drag your camera in there and it automatically knows to apply it there. So let's see what happens. Should fill up this view right here, I think. Okay. Let's see what happens if we choose it to near clip plane. That's probably going to put it over our view. Okay. So, and if we do render to texture, uh, what we'll do then is I'm going to create a uh, a 3D object, I'll just create a plane. And I'm going to roll, roll this thing around 90 degrees. I'm going to make it bigger. Yeah, let's say we're at a theater. We're at a drive-in theater. How about that. All right. So there's a plane. I'm just going to call this, uh, you know, my screen screen plane. And what I need to do here is I need to change this material out. So I'll do exactly what I did with that, that uh, particle texture is I'll come over here, I'll make a new material. Uh, 
um, actually, I'm, there's two ways to do this. Let's call I'm going to call it video material, I think. Let's see what that does. And I'm just going to make it be uh, it might be all, all right with just a, a standard material. We'll see what happens. Uh, but I want to apply that now to my screen plane. So I'll come right over to here and I'm going to choose video material. All right. And now I'm going to choose my video player and I'm going to change it to material override. think that will work. Let's see what that does. There you go. Sorry for the sound. So it's just turned sideways. I can turn it the other way around if I want to. Does that make sense? So that's one way. And then here's a third way. So there's three different ways. The, the, the camera frustrum or a material override, which is what I did right here. So it's just overriding the material that was applied to that geometry. And then a third way would be if you do render texture uh, and I would need to create a render texture. So I would come over here and I would go uh, render texture, create a new render texture. And then we'll call this my uh, okay. And I can give it a size, make some changes to it. I think by in general, it should be fine just like that. So now when I go to my video player, I can go uh, screen render texture. There we go. Okay. So you can see what I, do you see what I just did there? Okay. So essentially I took my material that's applied to that object. I changed it from a standard material that had a material on it to a, a shader called an unlit texture. And then I drug that render texture thing that I created and applied that to it. That's probably the fastest way to do this. Let's see. Okay, I'd probably take this guy and go. All right. Sound doable? <laughs> Who was that that asked to see about the video? I had. Okay, great. So you feel comfy with it. I see the thumbs up. So if for some reason you uh, don't recall how to get a particular item in your scene, I always get confused. You know, am I creating a new game object over here or am I 
creating an asset or am I adding a component? You know, what is it exactly I'm trying to do? And so if I know I want a video player, for instance, I would type, come up here and start typing video. And then you can see that it'll actually take you to that element in your, uh, in your menu system and you know, make your life easy having to dig it out. 